Hi guys! If you have worked with Merkin's brand, you may also have noticed the formula has recently changed and isn't nearly as smooth as it once was. So today I'm showing you what chocolate melts to use for the perfect consistency as well as my tips and tricks to achieving the most smoothly dipped treats that have a colorful shine without using any candy coloring while still looking super vibrant. These techniques can be used on any of the chocolate dip treats that you see here for your small business, a baby shower, or a fun dessert tray. There's so many skills we're learning in this video, plus a Valentine giveaway. So be sure to keep on watching! To have the most success as a treat maker, you want your supplies to be readily available while cutting costs. And you can buy these three essentials at your local craft store. All you'll need are craft store chocolate melts, a melting pot, and paramount crystals or easy thins. The sweet tooth fairy and candy melts are available in the widest variety of colors and flavors without having to spend between eight to twelve dollars plus on a bottle of candy coloring which you go through before you know it any craft store melts will work in this pot if you prefer joanne or hobby lobby and they often offer coupons michael's always has 20 percent off to try the method on your Valentine treats, I am offering a Valentine giveaway where you can win a Wilton melting pot, these colored melts, along with the limited edition strawberries and cream flavor, the Easy Thins, and a Valentine sprinkle mix. To enter, you need to be subscribed to my channel here on YouTube and comment your entry in the comments below, as well as be following me on my Instagram. I will be announcing the winner on Instagram next week on January 15th and you'll have all the materials you need to make these treats. When achieving smooth and shiny treats that look their absolute best, you'll definitely want to know about this easy melting method. The melting pot comes with a silicone insert. You want to put that into the pot first and add one bag of the chocolate melts in there. A really cool feature is that you can melt up to two colors at a time with their double insert, which I also included in the giveaway. Next, I'm taking Easy Thins, which are similar to Paramount Crystals. You can use either one, they are both made from the same ingredients, and help thin the chocolate to a fluid consistency. I just spotted the Easy Thins at Joanne and decided why not keep this video to mostly items from the craft store. To one bag of melts, I drop in four tablespoons of crystals before turning on the pot to the highest setting. I find putting them in at the same time both unmelted is the key to achieving the smoothest result as possible. If you add the crystals in afterwards, sometimes the flakes don't melt as evenly, leaving remaining pieces of chunks in your chocolate. Keep stirring continuously, and once the melts are about three quarters of the way melted, turn the switch down to the second setting and continue to give it a stir until completely melted and it reaches 110 degrees. It is important for you to know that Merkins and the Sweet Tooth Fairy are like dealing with two very different people, being that the Merkins guy shouldn't ever go above 90 degrees. However, for this guy, we need to bring the temperature to around 110 to reach its maximum flow. In my experience, the craft store melts can withstand higher temperatures, which is why I don't recommend melting merkins in this pot. Also keep in mind that it works best to mix your own colors for merkins, but these work great with pre-colored. Look at how shiny and beautiful that is. That's how it should be when melting is complete. It is time to remove the insert from the pot because you'd be surprised how warm and insulated it stays in here. We want this to drop to 95 degrees for an ideal dipping temperature. The basic skill I'm showing you here is how to smoothly dip your treats, demonstrating on Rice Krispies and marshmallows first. I cut the pre-made squares in half for small bites, starting by inserting my lollipop sticks into the center of the crispy treats and marshmallows. 
If they are misshapen, feel free to squish and remold them together with your fingers. The chocolate has sat on the counter and we are all ready to dip at 95 degrees. All you need to do is dip straight in for a few seconds to coat and create a clean line, making sure to shake the excess off and place them in a cake pop stand to dry. The chocolate is very shiny with a smooth coating. You can dip them all the way to the top if you prefer, but I left a small portion of the marshmallow undipped. And guys, if this is your first time stopping by my channel and you are enjoying so far, make sure you join the party and subscribe to see more videos every time I upload. As for the crispy treats, I did pretty much the same way, but they will look and taste even better if you do make your own, since the cereal is more tightly packed when you make them yourself, leaving a flatter surface on top for the chocolate. Another common question is what if the craft store melts appear white in the package, which most of the times they are, but you won't see it at all when the melting process is done correctly. It just happens from sitting on the shelf or being exposed to more light, and your chocolate can still be reused after melting by popping it out of these silicone inserts. For beautifully presented chocolate covered strawberries, my tips and tricks are to insert a toothpick into the center of your berries after they have been washed and dried. They should be at room temperature before dipping, but don't let them sit beyond an hour to prevent them from getting mushy and always begin dipping at 95 degrees. Pinch back your leaves and if the chocolate appears sheer and you see the skin of the strawberry and seeds peeking through, Shake off the excess, then immediately give it another coat right away for a seamless look. My favorite and updated way to set them is to stick the berries upright in some sort of stand. Mine was one of my cake pop boxes lined with floral foam so that you don't need to wipe the back of your berry. It looks gorgeous for a bouquet and also ensures the juice of the berry doesn't leak from the bottom. Many treat makers can't stand making cake pops, but I really think if you try this method, you will change your mind. I baked cupcakes and rolled them into balls. I will leave my recipe and a more detailed tutorial on how to prep them successfully down in the description box below. With the cake balls at room temperature, dip a lollipop stick into the chocolate melt. Not too much to drip down the stick, but enough to act as a glue. And gently push as far as you can without going through the other side, allowing them to dry for 15 minutes to seal the stick to the cake. Quickly dip in and out to cover, gently tapping off the excess and swirling off the back. I don't keep the cake pop in the chocolate for too long because it may suction it in and cause it to fall off your stick. As long as the chocolate is thinned out enough and you do a quick dip, they will look amazing. The Paramount Crystals keep the chocolate at ideal consistency, but if for some reason the chocolate is still too thick, turn the pot on the second setting and stir in 1-2 to two tablespoons more of the Paramount Crystals or Easy Thins, heating to 110 as we did earlier, and turn the pot off again. In any case you want to double up the chocolate for a deeper dip, melt another pot at the same time and fill it to the top with the second batch. For the remaining cake pops, I really like the bright pink and sugar cookie flavored candy melts. To match each color, I repeat the same steps for the stick with the chocolate that is going to be on the pop and dip right after those 15 minutes. I purchased the sugar cookie this past Christmas season. It has lots of flecks of red and green and looks so cute. It was one of my favorite limited edition flavors. Instead of applying sprinkles or sanding sugar while the chocolate is wet, my method of choice is to take edible adhesive and wilt in coarse sanding sugar or sprinkles. I recommend coarse sanding sugar like this gold one I'm showing here. It stands out a lot more than any fine sugar. Spread a generous amount of the edible adhesive on top of a completely dry cake pop and sprinkle on your sugar. This step allows you to take your time without worrying about the chocolate drying and neatly applies your decorations exactly where you want it to go. 
On the pancake pops, I did the same thing with a colorful mix of standing sugar that I used on my unicorn cream cake pops, as well as a cotton candy flavored standing sugar that smells delicious. This one doesn't happen to be the coarse green, but I still like it anyway. Last but not least, on the marshmallow pops and red cake pops, I brushed on the edible adhesive, making sure to coat enough on the bottom and around the marshmallow pop, brushing as clean of a line as I can around the edge, then dip the bottom into a bowl of nonpareils and sprinkle the edges with a spoon. I didn't intend to go for the Valentine look, but they match the theme with these Valentine nonpareils. You can also use a rainbow mix or any colors you like to dress them up. The most important tip is to thoroughly coat the bottom with edible adhesive so all of your sprinkles stick on. Any dessert platter or treat box is not complete without chocolate covered pretzels. With the mouse at 95 degrees, tilt the dipping container so that the chocolate pools up in the corner and rock back and forth. It's a little hard to see everything I'm doing, but basically I gave the pretzels a second coat being that my chocolate was a bit thin. Rocking back and forth, I leave a small section of the pretzel uncovered and wipe the area between the side and back to leave a clean edge and prevent the chocolate from pooling on the parchment paper. Being that this video is a guide for consistency, I wanted to show you how to attain the ideal drizzling and piping consistency. The chocolate melts are plain without any Paramount crystals or thinning agents mixed in. Otherwise, it will be too loose, and I'm microwaving the melt in 30 second intervals until it reaches 110 to 115 degrees. Then transfer that into a plastic squeeze bottle or small sandwich bag that has a tiny corner snipped off and when pouring the chocolate into a bottle or bag it should have a thick skin on the surface something we would never dip a berry into but it's a secret to that great drizzle consistency really is everything when you aren't drizzling, keep it face down into a tall cup so that the chocolate doesn't clog up and that's how you know it's on point so get ready to drizzle Practice squeezing so that you have a steady stream flowing out of the tip and maintain even pressure as you move back and forth. You can now drizzle on any trees at this consistency without the chocolate being too runny. It's all based on your preference whether you're most comfortable working with a squeeze bottle or plastic bag. Whichever tool helps you maintain your pressure. To create the ladybug design, dip a little less than half of your berry into milk or dark chocolate after they have completely set and pipe a straight line down the middle of your berry and scatter dots on each side using the same drizzle consistency chocolate. Again, either a squeeze bottle or sandwich bag can accomplish the look. Finish by piping two dots to attach the eye sugar decorations on our berry that's cute as a bug. I recommend to dip a toothpick over the dots to make the chocolate appear more round. I completely forgot, but go ahead and do that. There are several apple tutorials on my channel and you can sure dip your apples in this melting pot as well. Have your melts at 95 degrees and angle your dipping container so you are able to twirl the apple around and cover right below where the stick is inserted, shaking the excess off and wiping the bottom off the side of the container. For chocolate dipped apples, they are washed and dried with water only and dipped at room temperature. I only recommend boiling them to prep for candy apples. I left these a bright and classic plain red to show you the smooth coating. Of course, you can decorate them as you desire and refer to my other apple videos if you need any inspo or for more decorating techniques. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. If you did, give it a thumbs up and share it to other candy makers out there. Don't forget to enter the giveaway. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.